All right. Good to go. Still recording? Okay. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to White Mountain Approves. My name is Ken, and uh, coming to you this evening is Dave and Keith and Ian, uh, part of the White Mountain Approved crew, actually the crew. Um, and so uh, we just want to give everybody a shout out. Glad you're tuning into the broadcast again. Uh, get the word out. Tell other people. We do gear reviews. Actually, we're going to be doing gear reviews in this broadcast on hiking poles, the different ones we use, the various styles we use. And so, um, but anyways, glad you're tuning in. Keep watching for giveaways and fun events coming up this summer. Uh, we're going to have a lot of fun. All right. So hiking poles. Who, uh, who wants to go first? Some people don't use hiking poles. Some people do. Some people only use hiking poles. So let's kick this around. It's a great topic. And um, who wants to jump in? Yeah, I'll take it away. Go so I got the uh, Black Diamond Trail Pros. I don't have them with me right now because they're in the wife's car. But uh, so I bought those actually when I first started hiking. I used the uh, I bought a pair of uh, Walmart trekking poles for $20 to see if I was going to like them or not. Um, and once I knew I liked them, I spent the money and got these. Um, they're great. They break down to the three sections, so they pack up nice and tight. They came with the snow baskets and the mud baskets. I actually use them for my ski poles, too. That's why they're in the car right now. Um, they changed them up a little bit. I've had them for four years now, so in the time, they've changed them up. So I don't know what I'm going to do when I need a new pair, but those things hold up. They've saved me countless broken ankle, not broken, but sprained ankles from wiping out and um, I have tried to use them a little less, um, tried to get more of the stabilizing muscles to get activated a little more. So I'm not relying on them as much, especially on the way up. Now I usually just try and break them out on the way down. Um, but they definitely, with me, I noticed they help keep my posture up. They help me keep upright instead of kind of being hunched over a little bit, but they're definitely a great tool to have. Even if you're not going to use them all the time for water crossings or for any tricky situations, they're good to have. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Extra balance for water crossings is huge, huge to come in. Yep. And I know for me, if I'm snowshoeing, I got to have them or else I'm going to eat it every few steps. <laughs> yeah, good, good, Ian. Anybody else? Who's next? I'll go. I, uh, I personally, I have uh, what you call hiker hunger pole. It's, this is folded up now, but it's a, it's a nice pole. I've had it. Uh, over four years now, twice I broke off this lower piece. It's it's carbon fiber, really light. I broke this lower piece off, and I just got a hold of them on Facebook, took a picture, no questions asked, and they sent me back a piece for nothing. So lifetime warranty on. I believe when I bought them uh, off Amazon, they were at that time sixty five dollars. They have a nice cork grip. And a strap that's actually adjustable. So you can, you know, have a larger, smaller hand, you can adjust the strap. And it comes with multiple uh, adaptions. They got, like on this right now, I have the snow on there. They come with the mud. And they got a rubber tip, like on the end of a cane, it goes over the uh, steel spike on the bottom. And they got this other thing here. I'm not sure what you use this for, but maybe walking down the street, I guess. But it looks like a little shoe on it. And on that, it came, it all come with its own storage bag, all for the price of $65. As far as the use of a poles, uh, I personally don't use them going up. Uh, I'd like to have my hands free in certain areas to steady myself, but I, most often we'll use them coming down depending on how uh, uh, steep the terrain is, uh, especially in, a, in a summertime when the rocks and stumps are like that are exposed because I've taken tumbles even with spikes to uh, these poles to uh, assist me. So they're good to have. I think they each, each one weighs about eight ounces on it. So nice and light, easy to use. And uh, it's a good safety feature to have on steep areas. Yeah. Yeah, and that's a good point. Even with the poles, you can still, you know, take a fall. And so, I mean, um, you don't know it, but you now have the trail name of Tumbelina. So <laughs> <laughs> um, that's good. That's good uh, hiking pole, especially with that lifetime guarantee and being able to replace those parts for, for free. That's, that's awesome. That's great. Dave, what about you? I, uh, when I first started hiking, I used to have a uh, 
digital 35 millimeter a DSLR and I had it I had the case always wrapped up in my hand so I, I had a pair of hiking poles originally and I, I sort of was always jumbling them around and I found it a little awkward because I always had the camera um, I, I usually don't take the camera anymore just because my phone takes uh, almost as good or if not uh, better in some cases uh, photos um, however I think at some point I'm gonna grab a pair uh, Ian mentioned that the water crossings, that would be super handy. I felt a couple of times, especially this past season, if I had them, it would have made them a lot easier. Uh, and I think, you know, for going down, uh, there's been some times, especially with when we're carrying full packs, when we're camping out, uh, those things get heavy and I think it would certainly help me. Uh, and I really like the ones that both of you have that are all in uh, keys too. You can fold them up and store them away. So I, I, it's something I'm going to get this, this coming season, definitely. Good, yeah. Yeah, um, uh, yeah, I'm sure you'll pick a good pair um, and, and enjoy them because they do come in handy. So I use um, I use the Carbon Z. These are the Distance Carbon Z Black Diamond poles. Uh, my son, who's out in California, told me, Dad, if you're going to get a pair of hiking poles, spend the money and get a good pair. So these things are about um, $180. Um, they're very expensive, but they have these cables in them so they stay together and they flex, and so the whole thing snaps together, and then it snaps into position with the handle. It's a black foam handle, has um, titanium tips on the bottom, which has great grip on rock. Also have the rubber tips, but I find in hiking the whites, um, the rubber is just not sufficient. You need those titanium tips to grip to rock, and they grip to ice just as well, too. Um, so I, I really don't hike with anything else but the titanium. Um, the only thing about these is they sort of have like this mud basket on the bottom, which is not that big. It's only about an inch and a half in diameter. And that is fused on. That uh, that doesn't come off. So you can't change baskets. So these are only good for me for hiking in the um, spring or summer or fall. But as soon as snow comes and the snow gets deep, these won't work. What I do like about these, though, is the fact that they do like a Z they fold together, and so I can put both of them together, put a cord around them, and they strap right onto the bottom of my day pack, or they go into a side pouch on my other packs. And then when the snow does start flying, I use, um, these are Peak Walk, which are basically a subsidiary of Leaky, um, and Leaky is another uh, uh, pole maker that has a lifetime guarantee. I lost the snow basket on this one and replaced it with a, a, cup, a leaky pair of leakies that I got from the Kittery Trading Post in Kittery, Maine. These are fully adjustable. My carbon Zs, the, the distant Zs, um, are 130 centimeters, uh, and that's it. They're not adjustable. They do make new ones where the bottom part is adjustable so you can get them down to 120 or up to 135. But 130 is perfect for me because I'm like six foot three, six foot four. These are fully adjustable, has a lower section and a mid section, so I can stretch these out to 135 or make them as low as I want to, which is good if you're ever using a tent that needs hiking poles, uh, because I know I bought like a tent that um, needed hiking poles and my 130 carbon Zs were just way too, too long. So if I went with that tent, I'd have to bring an adjustable pole to shorten the distance. And then for winter hiking as well, I also got a black diamond whippet pole. And so this is basically a, uh, a carbon pole, carbon fiber made by black diamond. And the, the head is, um, take this off, you can, you can see the head has uh, an arresting ax on it, a snow ax. So uh, if you're on steep grades, you can use this for arresting. What I've used it for more times than not though, is for reaching up and hooking a branch or a tree to get me up over something I just can't get up, couldn't get up otherwise. Uh, well, actually, when Keith and I did um, Mount Success, there's a chimney in Mount Success. When we were coming back out of it, there was probably like eight inches of snow on the ground. And we went down it fine, but coming back up, I pulled this thing out and I was able to reach a, a tree that I couldn't reach otherwise. And so Keith and I both basically scooted out of that because the use of this pole. So, um, and another time, like if there was a big ice flow, I could smack that thing into the ice and just get enough of a grip. I mean, I wouldn't trust my life on it because it's not an ice pick um, for climbing. It's just an ice ax, but this, this helps out a lot. So usually what I'll do is I will hike with this, the whippet pole in one hand and the, um, and the peak walk snow uh, pole in the other hand. 
and that's what I do for uh, winter hiking. And I also am trying not to use them um, going up as much. Um, usually when I start getting really fatigued, if it's a real steep hike or a real long hike, I break them out just for that extra little push going up. But if it's really, really steep where you have to like use your hands like a you know hand over fist type climb, like Ian was saying, they really become a nuisance. You have to pack them up fast, get rid of them, and do your scrambling. So it's it's kind of you got to judge the section of trail that you're on. If it's really, really, really steep, you, you you don't want the poles, you know. But if it's just moderate grade and you know steep moderate grade, but not technical. Um, like I said, if I get tired, I'll resort to the poles going up and then going down. I've got a bad knee. I've torn a meniscus in the knee and, and um, got some arthritis in the knee. So taking the stress off of your knees going down for me is huge. I just put the pole right in the palm of my hands and just haul myself back a little bit, especially when the, the boulders are really far apart and they're, they're bigger jumps. And it works great. It works great. So, um, so there's a bunch of poles for you. There are a myriad of poles out there available. I mean, when you start shopping for poles, you're going to find everything like, like Ian said from Walmart at 20 bucks, all the way up to 200, $250, you know, the lightest light carbon fiber poles, Kyber, uh, uh, carbon fiber poles are not indestructible. I have already broken two of these, um, uh, because I was clumsy. I've since taken ballet and I have more finesse and I don't break them anymore. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> But that's uh, that's that's uh, that's our take on polls. And um, uh, what do you guys? Uh, any last thoughts that have come back to your mind as we've gone through this? No, pretty no, much. No, your comment about about coming down the hill and, and taking the pressure off your knees. I didn't use them on on the last hike we just did coming down the Pierce, and I noticed we came down pretty fast, and I noticed that uh, I was feeling it in my knees. But that's true. That it does help that way. Yeah. Yeah, it can take a lot of stress off. And straps, there's a, there, you know, a lot of them have straps on the handles, and there's a, there's a certain way you have to use your strap. You go down through the top of it and then back up and hold the grip, and it goes around your wrist. And it takes some of the pressure off of your arms and places it on your wrist because when I did, um, uh, what was the name of it? The Webster Cliff Trail. It was a really, really hot day. I got dehydrated badly. And um, using the poles all the way up and all the way down, I did end up with tendonitis in both my elbows. And man, that was painful. They call it tennis elbow and, you know, the sport of tennis. But that's really painful. And th I'm thanking God that it finally, you know, it went away. It subsided eventually, but I wouldn't want that to happen again. So take care with your hiking. And, and if you look at it online, you will find out that hiking poles do cause tennis elbow. Um, so I discovered it the hard way. All right, guys, anything else? Nothing else? That's it. Super. Hey, thanks for tuning into this broadcast again. White Mountain Approved. We're glad that you're with us. Put the word out and we'll see you on the trails. Take care.